All right, it's already been a pretty long day and this video is overdue, so we're just gonna get it done. Mabel, what do you know about protein powder? Well, I appreciate your two cents on the matter. Thank you, thank you. Mabel's like, dude, I'm tired and you haven't even started the video yet, put me down. Okay, she's not sticking around for this video, but I am here to talk all about protein powders. And before we talk about powder specifically, let's talk quickly about protein and why it's important. Whether you're looking to build muscle or burn body fat, you will likely benefit from a higher protein diet. I recommend at least one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass per day. When I talk about one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass, I'm referring to your body weight minus your fat weight. So for example, let's say you are a 150 pound man with 10% body fat. What you want to do is take 150 minus 15 because 15 is 10% of 150 and you'll get 135 and 135 becomes your daily protein target. And it's been proven in literature time and time again that this is an excellent daily target for protein because protein is, yes, as all the bros in the world say, it is the magical macronutrient. Protein is necessary for gaining muscle mass. And no, this doesn't mean it's gonna make you big and bulky. This means that you are going to look more toned over time by eating more protein. And it's also gonna speed up your metabolism because more muscle mass equals faster metabolism. It is expensive body tissue in terms of calories. So eat more protein burn more calories. Protein is essential for repairing body tissues. So it's not just good for building your muscles, it's also good for repairing joints, for your tendon and ligament health, it's good for your bones, it's good for your teeth, for your skin, for your hair, for your other organs. Protein is usually considered the most satiating macronutrient, so if you are on a diet and trying to lose weight, protein is gonna help you feel fuller for longer. Plus, it generally tastes pretty good if you do it the right way. Protein has the highest thermic effect of food, meaning that protein burns more calories than carbs and fats to digest. So in the long run, getting more of your daily diet from protein will actually result in your metabolism working harder to digest food and therefore burning more calories so you can actually lose more weight in the long run by protein prioritizing protein at each meal. And ideally, you should try to hit your daily protein target through whole food sources. This is gonna be the best for overall health because you're gonna get a lot of nutrients and minerals and vitamins along the way. But hitting this through whole food sources does take some smarts in the kitchen. And if you need some advice on getting whole food sources of protein, I will bloop a video up here that I already made about that and I'll link it below in the description and that'll get you started. But when you keep trying and trying to hit these daily protein targets through whole food sources and you just can't make it work, Work, that means it might be time to incorporate some supplements into your diet because they are just that, supplementary. They come in when whole food just won't cut it. That's right, this is a video about protein powders and I'm straight up saying that you should not be getting a majority of your daily protein intake from powders. Let's get that straight before we talk about what powder is right for you. Just incorporating the right protein powder into your day is not going to make all the difference in the world, but it is a minor part in the large picture that is your overall health and supplementing with protein powders can be totally healthy for tons of people. But it's just not that big of a deal, so let's not overthink it. Spend your time and energy on working out, eating right, sleeping well, having quality relationships, and enjoying life. That's gonna do much more for your health than picking the optimum protein powder. Your protein powder is just there to help you hit your daily target of one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. Maybe you don't have time to cook and you need a quick dose of protein. Maybe it's the end of the day and you're low on protein and you don't feel like scarfing down a chicken breast before bed. Maybe you just like a delicious high protein shake after your workout. These are all fine opportunities to incorporate a protein shake into the mix. And when it's time to break out the powder and get to shaking, what powder is right for you? Let's figure it out. So before we talk about specific brands, of protein powder, let's quickly talk about the different types of protein powder that you'll likely see online. And I'm gonna start with numero uno, in my opinion, whey protein. Whey is a protein that comes from processing cow's milk, so it's great for building muscle and it is the fastest absorbing source of protein, which makes it pretty novel and makes it pretty great to have post-workout. If you want that little added edge of protein synthesis after a workout, you wanna have whey protein. Plus, from my experience, whey's are generally better tasting than any other option of protein powder and they have the best amino acid breakdown. Now, just so we're on the same page, let me break down this term for you real quick. Proteins are made up of amino acids. So think of proteins like the building blocks of body tissues and amino acids are like the building blocks of proteins. 
So proteins are like packages of Legos and the amino acids are the Legos themselves. They're the different sizes and the different colors and the different uses for different things, but they all come together in this package that is protein. So if whey protein is a package of Legos, it is the best package of Legos you can buy to build your Lego house. It has all the right pieces in all the right quantities. Plus it has a little extra of this one really important Lego block called leucine, which is the Lego block that you use to build muscle. So Whey is the best all-around set of Legos that you can buy to build your perfect Lego physique. So get yourself a good quality Whey and you will have the best Lego fortress in the gym. But I can't just stop at saying Whey because Whey is like the inception of powders because within Whey, there are a couple popular forms of Whey. There's variation within this variation, but luckily there are just three main types that you're gonna run into. You're probably gonna see Whey isolates, Whey concentrates, and Whey hydrolysates. And these are all fancy words, but I want you to prioritize whey isolates. They're the best bang for your buck on protein concentration. That means of the calories you are getting from whey isolates, you are going to get most of those calories from protein and you're gonna get less and less from fats and carbs. It's more protein, less other stuff. Second on the list is whey concentrates, which have vastly varying degrees of quality because they are way less regulated than whey isolates, but generally they're gonna come with more fats and carbs than a whey isolate. So you're getting more calories and less protein. And if it's a powder, that means you're drinking more calories and wasting calories that you could be eating on your protein shake. In my humble opinion, concentrates generally taste worse than isolates. So not a whole lot of reason to buy a concentrate, but if it shows up as part of a protein blend that is primarily isolate, then that's okay because maybe it's saving you a little bit of money here and there. And we'll get more into that later when we talk about brands. And at the bottom tier of these whey options is whey hydrolysate. And this is actually more similar to whey isolate than concentrate, except for the fact that it is insanely overpriced just because it goes through this extra form of processing that marketers are going to use to try to convince you it's like the best freaking thing on the planet. They're going to tell you that your body absorbs it in some magical way that makes the protein more effective than a standard whey isolate, but that is just simply not true. Hydrolysates are overpriced. And I wouldn't recommend them to anybody except there is one caveat. Whey protein comes from cows. So if you have problems with lactose, you might have problems with whey protein. And there is some research out there showing that whey hydrolysates do aid in digestion. But before I start paying extra money for a whey hydrolysate compared to a whey isolate, I'm going to just up the quality of the protein powder. Unless you're lactose intolerant, it's likely that you're not getting these issues from the lactose, but more so you're getting these issues from a low quality protein source that's full of garbage. So don't buy a cheap powder that's full of crap, but if a good quality whey isolate keeps giving you problems, then yeah, try out a hydrolysate. And that's the scoop on whey. Let's move on to the next one. Probably the second most popular protein source out there is casein. Now this also does come from cows, so it's very similar in terms of the amino acid breakdown to whey protein. But the major difference here that you're gonna see in a lot of marketing is that casein protein is slower digesting. And there is a lot of research suggesting that having a slow digesting protein is good, especially if you're gonna go for long periods of time without eating. Casein is a great source of slow digesting protein. But here's the catch, so is most whole food sources of protein. The reason I suggest whey protein is because it's got some novelty and it's fast absorbing and it might give you that added edge. Whereas if you're just going to spend the same money on a different protein powder that is very similar to whole food, doesn't quite make sense to me. In fact, the curds in cottage cheese, that's casein protein. So if you're worried about not being anabolic while you sleep at night, instead of taking down a casein protein shake before bed, just eat a bowl of cottage cheese. But there is one quality of casein that is worth mentioning, which is that it's good for cooking. You might find some cool recipes out there with casein. One of my favorites is super simple where you can literally just slowly whisk casein protein with milk or water and it turns into like a pudding. It gels nicely. But that's also just like an unnecessarily expensive ingredient to have in your kitchen. So you make the call on that. Let's get on to the next one. Collagen protein is basically the byproducts of protein making. It's like the hot dogs of protein powder. Casein has gelatin like properties, but this is literally just gelatin. Not to 
mention its amino acid breakdown is pretty bad. It's like everything that your body doesn't really need. Remember that Lego analogy I made earlier about amino acids? Well, this is like a pack of Legos that you take home and you start building your Lego house and you get along the way and you're like, oh my God, I don't have enough pieces to make anything that resembles a house. I'm missing half the damn pieces. My house has no color variation. My house has no door. My house has no windows and I don't have a ceiling. This is an incomplete house. I'm starting to think this pack of Legos I purchased is insanely overpriced. I'm starting to think these Legos are just a byproduct of leftover Lego pieces that some company had laying around, threw into a box and said, here, buy this special collection of Lego blocks. I can't promise they're the best blocks in the world, but they're definitely paleo approved and Whole30 approved and all the woo woo marketing in the world and whatever, but really these are not good Legos. It's not a good protein. It's not doing anything for you that whey, casein, or whole food protein can't do. And as long as you're eating your one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass per day, there is no reason to supplement with collagen. But let's not rag on collagen all day. Let's talk about the next one. Milk protein. A very cheap way to sell protein from cows that is significantly worse than whey and casein. It will contain less protein for the calories. It will contain more crap for the calories. It will make you fart all day, and it's not a whole lot better than just buying milk. So the short and narrow on milk protein is no. Now let's stop talking trash and talk about something that I'm sure you're curious about. Plant proteins. Your best bet for plant protein is either going to be pea protein, rice protein, or ideally a blend of pea and rice protein. This is because the amino acid profiles of pea and rice blend together and fit together really well. They're each a half set of Legos that when you combine them become a perfectly complete set of Legos that are going to help you build that perfect Lego house. A house that is quite comparable to the house you would build on a whey isolate. And it's for that reason that a pea and rice blend is often referred to as the vegan's whey protein. If you are going plant-based, I recommend avoiding soy proteins because there's a lot of research out there that it has damaging effects on your hormones. And I'd also avoid hemp proteins because they just have a generally bad amino acid profile and a pretty low protein per calorie ratio. So stick to pea or rice or pea and rice and you're good. And a great choice for a powder that does this would be Legion Athletics Plant Plus. Speaking of brands, let's start talking about brands. When it comes to finding your brand of protein, you need to consider a few things. Mainly quality, cost, and taste. It's got to have enough quality protein per scoop to make sense adding it to your diet. Like it's got to be more convenient than whole foods. It's got to be affordable enough to realistically fit into your budget on a recurring basis based on how much you consume and how often you need to buy it. That all needs to make sense in your budget. And it's got to taste good. I mean, there's no reason to suffer through a protein shake. This is an opportunity to get a good taste because it's a processed food and I want you to enjoy the processed foods that you eat. And for all of those reasons I just mentioned, it makes sense to start by looking for a whey protein for most people. So I'm gonna type in whey protein on Amazon and pull up a few popular options and break them down for you. And to do this, I'm gonna be looking at my computer screen, which is over here. So I won't be looking at you anymore, dear viewer. So don't think I'm ignoring you. I'm just looking at my computer. So let's start somewhere in the middle with the gold standard, literally. This is called gold standard. Optimum Nutrition's gold standard way. It's not the best powder on the market, but it's just good enough to be worth buying, I would say. And my reasoning for this is that Optimum Nutrition is a giant company that's basically got a monopoly on the lower shelf supplement industry. They buy their ingredients in such bulk that the price per scoop per gram of protein is pretty much unbeatable. Not to mention the size of the company means that they've been third party tested a million times. They've definitely earned my trust. So one scoop weighs 31 grams and contains 24 grams of protein for 120 calories. That means that there's only six grams of other stuff in this scoop. So you're getting one gram of fat and four grams of carbs. That's not bad. And the other one gram is probably coming from flavorings, fillers, preservatives, whatever. That's fine. You'll also see on the ingredients that they do have a proprietary blend of whey. So this is not pure whey isolate. It's a blend of sorts. But on that proprietary blend, the first ingredient is isolate and then it's concentrate and then it's peptides. So these ingredients are listed in order of weight. So I know the proprietary blends are like a sketchy thing that companies do to get key ingredients to the top of the ingredient label, but at least in this proprietary blend, the key ingredient in that blend is isolates. So we're not sure exactly how much of this blend is coming from isolate, but we know that most of it is, and that's a good thing. And that's pretty much reflected in the macros. So I'm pretty happy with this blend. The ingredient list is also relatively short. 
I mean, it is artificially sweetened and flavored, so that's, again, where we're getting some of the extra weight in the scoop. But speaking from experience, the artificial flavors and sweeteners do go a long way because this is a great tasting protein powder. I've had a lot of their flavors, and generally it's like a solid seven or eight out of 10. One thing that I don't like is that it contains added BCAAs. Now, this is just like throwing a handful of Lego blocks into your Lego house and trying to do something with them, and they can be beneficial if you're short on one of these branch chain amino acids, but BCAAs are not gonna do anything for you that whole protein can't do, and if you're hitting your daily protein targets, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to be adding extra BCAAs to your powder unless you're involved in something called amino spiking, which is when companies add branch chain amino acids to their protein powders to make it read that the powder has more protein than it actually has. They're using these amino acids to raise the perceived level of protein in the scoop without actually having more complete protein in the scoop. Because these branch chain amino acids are actually just isolated Lego blocks. But like I said, gold standard is the gold standard for a reason. They're super reputable. They've been third party tested a million times and I'm pretty confident that they are not actually doing amino spiking, but rather they're throwing extra amino acids in there because it's cheap and some amino acids actually taste good. Why not put that on the side of the bottle? So I don't like the added BCAAs, but I don't think they're actually counting them towards their total protein content. And if you found anything to the contrary, definitely let me know in the comments because I would like to sort that out. But I do believe that gold standard is the standard for a reason. So now let's talk about something a little less reputable. Syntha 6. Oh boy, here we go. So one scoop is 47 grams. That's a pretty freaking big scoop of protein powder. So it only comes with 22 grams of protein, but a whopping 200 calories. So in the 47 gram scoop with 22 grams of protein, that's 20 25 grams of other stuff. So right off the bat, you're getting six grams of fat and 14 grams of carbs. Guys, most people don't need to be drinking a lot of their calories. You wanna be eating your calories and then drinking calories when you need that extra protein just because it's convenient, but you don't wanna be drinking carbs and fats. And you're also drinking a ton of other stuff because there's way more weight in the scoop that isn't protein. And look at that ingredient label. It is long, unnecessarily long. And it even contains wheat. What? Nothing against wheat either. Like I eat wheat all the time, but like wheat has no place being in a protein powder. That's pretty much just filler. They are starting with a proprietary blend as well, but their blend is mostly whey concentrate and then whey isolate and then casein and then even milk protein and then a bunch of other proteins. This is just like a huge hodgepodge of proteins masked and marketed as a whey protein. And the only benefit I could really see from this powder is that it could be like a mass gainer more so than a good source of protein. It's just a way to get calories in from drinking them. And not to mention, I have had this in the past. I've had the vanilla and the chocolate. I don't even think it tastes as good as the gold standard vanilla and chocolate. We're looking at like a five or six out of 10 on taste. This is not good. It's a cheaper bottle, but I don't think the protein is cheaper. We'll work that out in a minute. But if you have the extra cash and you wanna get something extra good, let's quickly talk about a top shelf protein powder. And we're gonna bring back Legion Athletics. And this is the company that I mentioned earlier who has that pea and rice protein blend for the vegan source of protein. They know that pea and rice complement each other very well. They know how to make a great vegan source of protein that tastes delicious. They also know how to make a great whey source of protein that tastes delicious. So their scoop is 27 grams and contains 22 grams of protein. So there's only an extra five grams of stuff. Plus the whey is 100% whey isolate. That is the good stuff. So there's no concentrate in this. There's no other crap in this. The ingredient list is insanely short. We're getting no fat. We're getting two grams of carbs. There are beef BCAAs added to it, but I just ran into this, and the BCAAs are mostly leucine, and leucine is the really good Lego. That's the muscle building Lego. And they are not counting these BCAAs towards their total protein content. So this company has a lot of integrity. Even their cows are grass fed. They don't use any artificial sweeteners. Um, so it's sweetened with stevia, it's thickened with xanthan gum, which isn't bad, and it's flavored with natural flavors. So if you have the money to spend on a higher quality protein, I would say go with Legion. And from my experience, 10 out of 10 on flavor. I bought a couple of different flavors from them, but their cinnamon cereal milk is hands down like one of the best drinks I've ever had. And it's natural flavor, but all of this good is gonna cost you. So let's do a quick cost analysis of these different powders I just looked at. I just wrote down the cost of the tub of the protein and the amount of scoops in the tub of the protein, and then the amount of protein per scoop. So I'm figuring out how much each gram of protein costs. And for your reference, I also did this with some chicken breast I recently bought 
thought. So the price of protein per gram of chicken breast came out to about six cents per gram. And that's protein from whole food sources. So that's our comparison here as we look at powders. So at the top, Legion Athletics protein comes out to about seven cents per gram of protein. Chicken, like I said, comes out to around six cents per gram of protein. The Syntha 6 comes out to around four cents per grams of protein. And the gold standard comes out to around three cents per gram of protein. That crappy Syntha 6 is literally more expensive than gold standard when you factor in all the other stuff that you're getting in a scoop that isn't protein. You're paying for fats and carbs and fillers. So all of that being said, guess what protein powder I like to drink. And before I reveal that, let me mention that I do not have any affiliation with any of these companies. I'm just a dude who has done a little too much research. So ideally, I'd have a tub of Legion on hand, but since it's the holidays and budgets are tight, I settled for some gold standard, you guessed it, Optimum Nutrition's Whey Protein Blend. Don't be afraid to settle for fine, but don't be a cheapskate and settle for below fine because that's gonna do you no good and you're actually spending more money on crap that isn't protein. And before I wrap this up, I gotta mention flavoring because when it comes to flavoring a protein powder, there are some things to consider because I would recommend either getting vanilla or something really interesting. You can mix vanilla with other flavors to make flavors. So if you're making protein shakes in a blender, there's not a big reason to go and get a banana or strawberry or other fruit flavored protein powder because you can just blend a vanilla with real fruit and get your flavor that way because these powders are artificially flavored. Why waste on the artificial flavors from fruit when you could just add real fruit to it? But there are some interesting flavors that would be harder to recreate that actually makes sense. Like you'll see a lot of interesting flavors from Legion Athletics, including their cereal milk and birthday cake flavors. But even from Optimum Nutrition, I'm a huge proponent of the chocolate peanut butter. And I know that you can make a chocolate peanut butter flavor on your own, but chocolate and peanut butter are both really highly calorie dense foods and adding them to a vanilla powder would result in something that has a lot of extra calories in it. So it does make sense to get these flavors artificially added to a protein powder. And I know that these are very processed sources of chocolate and peanut butter, but this is a very processed protein shake. And it's for that reason that a majority of your diet should not be protein shakes. You wanna be getting most of your protein from whole food sources, and you wanna stop overthinking this whole powder thing. I've wasted a lot of time researching protein powders so that you don't have to. So get the gold standard or get something better, but don't get something worse. And definitely don't get anything from Walmart. A lot of these companies are doing some shady, shady, shady things. The supplement industry is a shady industry. And that's why supplements are supplementary. They come into the picture when whole food just won't cut it. And a lot of times you're gonna find these cool little up and coming companies, but I'm sorry you can't always trust the little guy. That's why I support the monopoly that is optimum nutrition. So go out there, feed into that monopoly unless you can find a high quality alternative like Legion and stop thinking about protein powder. I've had this video requested to me a million times, so I'm glad it's finally gonna be out there. And if you've made it to the end of this video, let me know your favorite protein powder in the comments below. What are you drinking? Did I rag on it in this video? Are you gonna change up what you're drinking after watching this video? Do you think your current protein powder is full of crap? Do you think I'm full of crap? Let me know in the comments below. I'm making a video a day every day for 30 days, and tomorrow marks the halfway point. So we'll see you then. Cheers. Thank you.